too is regarding exhaust gas temperature situations and obviously you know what exhaust gas temperature is safe um, I'll talk about it. it's a little noisy in here but we'll be okay um, so generally speaking there's there's two types of exhaust gas temperature situations that you need to be aware of now firstly the numbers that you're looking at you need to be very aware of if it's pre or post turbo. The actual turbo charger itself, and it's just where some of the efficiency comes from, will actually absorb quite a bit of heat. Um, so it's not uncommon for the temperatures pre and post to be anywhere between like 50 on the cruise to even 200 degrees variation hot to cold uh, uh, across the turbo charger, so whether it's before or after. But one of the other common issues that we get is, is people talking about, most people will have their turbo charger uh, exhaust temp sensor in the dump. And a lot of people go, you know, we talk about 600 or 650 degrees C as being the limit to what is a okay temperature. Um, the reality is, is that the okay temperature is so variant depending on fuel system, engine tuning, the type of engine itself, um, as to what is okay, but also the application and what you're doing. So the first thing everybody needs to understand about exhaust gas temperature is that it's actually, it's an indication only, right? It's no hard and fast rule it gives you basically what we're trying to stop is the pistons from melting and we're worried about the pistons right so to be measuring exhaust gas temperature you know after it's burnt after it's come out of the exhaust valve down the line through the turbo and out the other side is not really a true indication of what the piston crown itself is doing so you must always take it with a grain of salt the next thing you've got pintle style injectors like in a TD42 that virtually have bugger all atomization um, and that type of exhaust temperature, because the fuel's not busted up and all that type of stuff, that type of temperature must be quite a bit lower because the fuel is going to take so much longer to burn inside the cylinder because the atomization rate's not there. It's actually going to get a lot further to the piston crown before it burns. So it's going to be burning closer to where we're worried about. So that's one thing. So that's why typically when you see people tuning TD42s for long, for long standard or long periods of time, um, you know, they're generally tuned to be around about the, the 18, 19, 20 to 1, where you can quite comfortably get away with a common rail at AFRs of more like 16 to 1. So, that's one aspect of it. Second aspect, Matty, thanks for the question, buddy. I'll get to that in just a sec. Um, the next question is, when it comes to um, the actual fuel system itself, the atomization is going to burn faster, going to burn more complete inside the cylinder. Therefore, you should see... Well, you should be able to run a higher EGT in that one. Now, just let me explain why in common rail you can run higher. First things first, you need to understand a piston designed for a common rail engine is much stronger and, much, and designed to deal with much more. Generally speaking, because the common rail fuel system can contain so much potential energy, the pistons are designed a little better on average. Um, unless, of course, you've got 080 Toyotas, right? Um, the other thing you need to know is most of the common rail, or nearly every common rail piston that I've seen anyway, comes with uh, a light coating on the piston crown itself, usually a ceramic, um, which obviously helps the piston crown deal with um, higher temperatures. So generally speaking, it's going to deal with a little bit more. The next thing is, the biggest thing about engine temperature and particularly piston crown is actually advanced. Or, or engine advance. So if we look at say a TD42, I'll just draw the engine cycle in degrees. Man, I suck at drawing, right? So generally speaking, we've got TDC somewhere up here and we talk about advance, right? Now advance is gonna be somewhere like maybe 30 odd or 25 degrees, whatever it is. Generally speaking, the more advance that you've got, the more you're gonna be burning the fuel earlier in the stroke. So the piston is gonna have more time to absorb that heat, particularly as it's increasing the compression as it keeps increasing. So in instances where you have much more cylinder advance, you're going to deal with a much higher piston crown temperature. Now also, because it's got more time, generally speaking, the engine and particularly the water jacket, with more advance, absorbs more heat and therefore your exhaust temperatures are lower. But also your exhaust temperature ceiling limit is also lower because you can't go as high if you've got more advance. Now on the other side of the coin, it's not uncommon at certain parts of the uh, at certain parts of the load range for a common rail to be, hey, so I'm in the way, check. Um, it's not uncommon for common rail at certain parts of the equation to actually have timing that's like five or six degrees after TDC. So if it's putting the fuel in way back here, then ultimately you don't, you're not, 
you're not so concerned about exhaust temperatures because again it's only an indication of what's going on with the piston crown and at this point there's actually not so much time for the engine or the piston crown to absorb that heat because the piston's already on the way down it's obviously significantly later and much closer to where the exhaust temperatures are so to give an indication my Hilux runs 50 pound of boost and I don't know bloody rich AFRs and I've seen 900 degrees C in the dump more times than I care to count so it very much depends on the vehicle and the application so the next part of the equation is um, thermal loading so at the end of the day exhaust gas temperature sensor gives you an indication of, of just an indication of what's going on um, but you also got to be aware that if you're going to run, like I've run 900 degrees C in the dump, but that doesn't mean that I can do that for 20 minutes straight while I'm towing five tons up a hill, because clearly something's going to give at those sorts of numbers. So 900 degrees C while you're doing a run down the drag strip is fine, no problems. But if you were going to tow with a TD42 up Mount Oosley here with a five ton on the back, you're going to want to keep it under 550, 600 because you're going to start running into dramas because it's about thermal loading. It's not just temperature, but it's temperature over time. And of course, you need to be aware of all the other factors. So when we talk about EGT sensors, that's the next independent variable. The number of times we've had issues with EGT sensors themselves being inaccurate is another big issue. So um, EGTs, again, it's a good indicator, but we certainly don't run our lives by it. Um, what we would say is to get a competent tuner um, to, to make that. We'll try to keep the cowboy jokes to a minimum. Um, we'll try, I would use a competent tuner. Understand that you know if they know their job properly, that the tune that you've got is safe. Use your EGT gauge to then benchmark what you know to be normal. And then over the course of a couple of years, things are going to change. The tune might go out. The, the turbo might get sad. Whatever the case may be. Um, and of course that's when you might start to see the EGT change and it'll give you an indication as to when there's something wrong. So, just use it as an indication. It's never a hard and fast rule. It does, it's not gonna make a big difference one way or the other. Um, but just like I said, once you know that you've got a good tune, use that to benchmark and then we can go from there.